channel today. I'm Emily and I'm glad you're here. So today I'm going to talk about what I go through when I experience a peanut reaction. A lot of people don't understand what I mean when I say I am anaphylactically allergic to peanuts. What this means is that I go from being totally fine like this to the brink of death in a matter of minutes. It is crazy. So I'm going to talk about the steps and the phases that I go through to go through a peanut reaction and how horrible it is. So hopefully you will understand why when you come across someone with an anaphylactic reaction, why they might not accept your invitation to eat a certain snack or go to a certain restaurant because reactions are absolutely, utterly, totally terrible to experience. So here we go. Okay, so there are five different phases that I've labeled of my reaction. Everyone's different. You'll learn if you have anaphylaxis yourself, you may already know your phases. You may be learning your phases, but regardless, every time you come in contact with your allergen, be aware, take time to be aware of what is going on and kind of the timing of everything. This is how it works for me. Number one, contact. Contact can happen in a variety of ways, and that is different. But for me, for the reactions that I have had, I have come in contact with the peanut allergen through touch and ingestion. Ingestion is eating it. So for example, I have touched a doorknob and had to call 911. What happens when I touch the allergen is, for example, someone who ate peanuts, touched the doorknob, didn't clean it off before I touched it, I touched it. The peanut proteins went from the doorknob through my skin into my bloodstream at which point my body identified the allergen and reacted because it identified it as a foreign dangerous protein so there's the touch an ingestion reaction happens when i eat something for example there was a time that i ate an enchilada i thought oh it's mexican food it'll be totally fine it's really asian food that i have to worry about I was just lying to myself apparently. I didn't know that though. So I didn't want to ask what was in it. I just ate it and I started feeling funny. So what happens in an ingestion reaction is I eat it and at which point the food item goes into my mouth, down my throat, into my stomach and at whatever point the protein sinks through my skin, my throat, my stomach and enters my bloodstream and then my body identifies it as a dangerous protein and reacts accordingly. So there's contact. Number two, I suffer the complications of a mild reaction. What this looks like for me is tingling in my throat and mouth and on my skin. It just starts feeling funny, like crawling ants or a little itchy or scratchy or something's just not right. But number three, I start suffering kind of a moderate reaction. So that tingling quickly turns into more extreme itchiness and which eventually gives rise to swelling. Now the swelling will usually happen in the point of contact, so that could be my hand or my lip, even my throat all the way down to my stomach. I can just feel it swelling and tightening and just in, in association with that tingling, it just makes me start feeling a little weird. I can feel my body just heating up and becoming alert because my body has recognized that there is something attacking the system. Now, anaphylaxis is called anaphylaxis because the body reacts in essentially an illogical way. It's freaking out about something that really it does not need to freak out about. So that's kind of the moderate phase of the reaction. The severe phase is when that swelling and tingling turns into hives and extreme swelling. So extreme swelling looks like I'm all red, puffy, my fingers are huge, I can't get my ring off. Um, I feel extremely itchy all over, just my whole body burning. When you think of like a bear rubbing its back against a tree, like my whole body is itchy. Like it's, it's all like, it just feels like it's on fire and it's all gotta go. It's crazy. So my, and I swell so much that you can't see the bridge of my nose. My lips look like I got major Botox or something done and it's just, it's kind of scary. I look like a bright red tomato. And unfortunately, I don't have any pictures. I have not gotten to the point of a reaction where I'm like, hey, let's take a picture because I know I'm gonna live. 
I just, I don't take pictures during those moments. So I don't have any good pictures to show you, um, but it is very real. The step from the mild to the severe phase, that like chunk of the reaction, can be anywhere between five to 10 minutes for me, depending on how I came in contact with it. If it's touch, it's usually 10 minutes. If I straight up eat it, I start feeling the results and the effects immediately. So at that point, once I, I usually epi between the moderate and the severe phase, which is usually if I've directly touched it or ingested it. I've had moments where I've been in enclosed areas, for example, rooms, cars, anything like that, that someone's opened peanuts. And if they don't put it away or if I don't remove myself from that area, I can have a reaction. I've not had a reaction that way, but it's totally possible because when you smell something, like for instance, when someone opens peanuts and I smell it, I am actually smelling, my nose hairs are detecting the peanut proteins themselves. So those proteins are being ingested into my body, going into my lungs, sinking into my bloodstream, and my body identifies it and reacts. So there it is. So there's a mild, moderate, and severe phase of reacting. I administer the EpiPen between moderate and severe and immediately seek medical attention. This includes calling 911 or driving to the ER. I work really hard to do my research and I actually only live about three minutes from the closest ER. That is including traffic lights. Um, did I plan that? Yes, I totally try to live in areas where I'm close to help and in the ER if I ever needed one. So if I was by myself and having a reaction, I would call 911. If I have someone that can take me to the ER, I have someone drive me. But if you're having an anaphylactic reaction, it is never safe to drive yourself to the ER. In my opinion, that is my opinion. Talk to your doctor for help. So once I've administered the EpiPen, I seek medical attention and go to the ER. I've had phases where I get to the ER and say, I've administered my EpiPen. The reaction subsides for me for about 20 minutes after I administer the EpiPen. I've had enough reactions at this point to know that that is how long the EpiPen lasts for me. It's different for everyone. I have a friend, he's allergic to all nuts, and he can take the EpiPen and he's fine. Um, for me, that is not the case. The second that I take the EpiPen, I have a clock, literally, it's like a body clock that starts counting down from 20 minutes. And if I don't get medical attention in 20 minutes, I run the risk of becoming brain dead. So as soon as I administer the EpiPen, I go to the hospital and because I had already taken the EpiPen before I got to the hospital in this specific instance, they looked at me and thought I looked fine. So they told me to just sit down in the ER. I had to pressure them a little bit. I said, no, I'm anaphylactically allergic. I need to get back there. I actually had a friend with me and she was really vouching for me. She said, no, she just ate it. You don't know what she looked like five minutes ago. She needs to get back there. And so they listened to my friend and got me back there. Now, warning. Nurses and doctors in the ER are used to people coming in and just freaking out and being like, I need to get back better now, get me back there, I'm going to die. The best tip I can give you is if you're having a reaction, stay calm. Remember to breathe. Take your EpiPen. It's going to be okay. But you've got to be, you've got to have composure and you've got to walk up there and say, you know, know your stuff. Be like, I have anaphylaxis. Here's my empty EpiPen. I would like to get the medicines in me before, you know, my body starts reversing this EpiPen shot. And they will understand and work with you. Hopefully, hopefully, we've all had those times where they don't quite work with us. And I just hope you all get good ER people. Just praying prayers for everyone. So um, at that point, I have had times where I go in though and they look at me and I look like a red avatar with no nose and swollen lips. And they say, oh my goodness, we have a code whatever it is was severe on the brink of death and they get me back as soon as they can. So that's great. When I get back to the ER bay, the recovery phase starts. This phase is very long. So they put the IV into me and that administers antihistamine and steroids. The antihistamine is essentially a Benadryl and it helps your body suppress the immune system so it will stop reacting. The steroid gives your body the strength it needs to reverse the reaction. So as that IV is pumping into my body, I start feeling like I have energy again, the highs, the itching starts going away. 
One thing though, the last part of a severe phase of a reaction is your body will try everything it can to get the allergen out. And that includes severe diarrhea and vomiting. And it's so real. I've had times where I've started vomiting before I've gotten medical attention. It's totally normal. It's absolutely horrible. But that is part of a body's natural instinct and reaction to get the protein out of your body. So I've had, like I said, I've had times where before I've gone to the hospital, I've started throwing up profusely. Usually I get the IV in and then I feel my body start saying, okay, I'm going to get everything out now. So the body will just throw up and have diarrhea until you have absolutely everything out of your system. So between the vomiting, the diarrhea, and the reaction of intense hives and swelling and everything else you go through with the reaction, when you are recovering with an IV in your arm after you've thrown up and had diarrhea, you are exhausted. Your body has lost every ounce of energy it has. And so the recovery just continues. And I usually spend about six hours in the hospital. That's usually what it's been. And I just feel so depleted, so zapped and sleepy. I usually just close my eyes. I um, drift in and out of sleep. I've had times where I know people have come to say hi and I just can't open my eyes. I can't lift my arms. I'm just, my energy is gone. And so once I get the medical approval to leave the hospital than I usually do. Anytime I've left the hospital, I've had to be in a wheelchair as I've been taken out because I'm so weak. And this weakness usually takes about three days to recover from. So if you have a severe and an anaphylactic reaction or someone you know does, just know that they probably will not be feeling back to normal for about 72 hours. And it's important to follow the doctor's instructions Make sure you get the medicines that they recommend. Sometimes they send you home with a prescription for more antihistamines or steroids or even another EpiPen. It's good to stock that up. I have heard of relapse reactions, but that's never happened to me. It's always good to make sure that if you do use your EpiPen, replace them as soon as you can so that you can be prepared. So there we go. There are the phases of my anaphylactic reaction. One, contact two mild, three moderate, four severe, and then five recovery, which takes the longest, but it's always worth it. So there you have it. If you have any takeaways from this video, definitely always be 20 minutes from help. At least that's how long EpiPens typically work. You'll know your allergy, but it's always good to be within medical help. If you ever go camping, hiking, or you're far away from a, or if you're ever camping or hiking or taking part in another activity that keeps you far away from the hospital, be aware of that. Consider the options, maybe go somewhere else that's closer to medical help and always have extra EpiPens handy. So there we go. If you have any questions about my reactions, how they work, or any more of the nitty gritty, if I haven't already shared enough, go ahead and ask me in the comments below. I hope this helps and it helps you identify what a reaction looks like and feels like not only in people you love but friends too so that if anyone starts saying like I feel funny you can identify that as a mild reaction and watch it as it may escalate to severe. It is not uncommon to have people have an anaphylactic reaction that have no history of it or don't know about it. I have a friend and she had an anaphylactic reaction to pineapple. It came out of the blue. I've heard of anaphylactic reactions to seafood or avocado or just random things that people never they had no idea about but are a real issue so it's good you're watching this video you're aware of my signs and symptoms remember they're different for everyone but in the case of a reaction seek medical attention i hope that helps have a good day